So I've finished my basic cylinder and I'm going to do the very beginning steps of how to do a hippo like the one I made before and I'm going to show you how I got from a cylinder which came up to here and I added pieces to create the bottom jaw and the upper jaw and I did a little pinching and a little bit of squeezing on the cylinder to kind of create this uh, more dynamic shape um, in the body of the hippo. So I'm going to walk through some of those basic steps so that you can see some very simple ways of handling the clay. Now when the clay is this moist, it's relatively easy to manipulate it by doing something like this. I can very gently, very gently, just work at it and pinch part of it in. I want to make sure that I use broad surfaces of my hands to manipulate the clay like this instead of poking at it with fingers. If I poke at it with fingers or try to do very specific uh, <clears throat> kind of pressure on it, it's uh, much more easy to uh, accidentally poke a hole in it or tear it. So I'm using you know, big surfaces of my hands to try to do this and I'm pinching it in and kind of squeezing it up as I go. And then I'm going to just very simply squeeze this in. I can do more of this later uh, a little bit. It's important to recognize that at this point when the clay is pretty damp I can do this. Once the clay starts to harden a little bit more it's going to be very difficult if not impossible for me to do this kind of manipulation because if I squeeze too hard on the cylinder I can break it. Okay. So now I've, got, I've cut two very simple pieces of clay to uh, mimic the top and bottom jaw of the hippo and you can kind of see you know what that looks like in a very raw state now they're basically both exactly the same size and I'm going to use the same techniques I did before slipping and scoring to attach these so I'm going to make sure that I score here I'm going to get my slip I'm going to put it on here you can be liberal with the slip I don't need to worry too much about you know the fact that it's sloppy at this point everything's sloppy at this point now I'm going to turn this so you can see I want to take my uh, my piece and curve it. I, again, I can do this with the clay at this point because the clay is soft enough for me to do this kind of manipulating with. And I want to take, uh, I want to pinch these pieces together like I did with the side. So I may need to kind of get my fingers in there and, and pinch like that. I want to make sure that I do a really good job of joining these pieces together. Now, you can see what's going to happen here if I'm not careful. It's very, very soft and very flexible. Let me turn it sideways so you can see it. If I let go of this, it's going to flop down. It's probably going to tear. So I want to try and take advantage of the clay's ability to kind of hold itself up by doing this with it. If I curve it, it's going to create that kind of a structure that will hold itself together. So now, really quickly, before I do anything else, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to score this and I'm going to add some coil in here. I've cut some coils. I'm going to add a little bit of coil material. If I make this thicker, and I'm very careful with my thumb to push this clay. I want to hold that so it doesn't fall. And I'm going to push. I'm supporting it on the other side. I have to at this point because it's you know vulnerable to breaking. I have to handle the clay very carefully at this point to make sure that I don't tear it apart. Now, there's a little piece here. I'm going to use this to my advantage by kind of pushing it in there and creating a little bit more of a support on the side of the mouth by doing that. And I can build up more clay and I can kind of even this out as I go and it will start to strengthen itself. Thicker clay is always stronger. It's better to build too thick at the beginning because you can always thin it down after the clay firms up a little bit. So if I make it really kind of crude and thick right now, I can add another coil in here to make it even stronger. I should probably score that before I add it in there. Add another coil. I want to add more to make this a little thicker to try to make that joint strong enough. So that's one side and it's now it's starting to hold itself up better because I've added some more clay in there. Again, it's better to have too much clay now rather than not enough. Not enough, it will tear apart really easily. Too much, I can always thin it down. Again, it's very flexible and very easy to move at this point. So that's one side of the hippo. And then the same thing I'm going to do on the other side. So I'm going to score 
and score, get my slip, add it in there, and very carefully curve this so that it matches. And I'm gonna pinch, 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 pinch. There's a reason we make this, these pieces out of thick clay at the beginning, because that will help hold itself together really well while we're doing this work. And then later, we can thin it down like I did with my hippo. And I'll show you a little bit more about that later. All the detail and refining work happens after we get the initial building done. Now you see this one is loose too because I haven't put anything in here yet. So I'm gonna come in here with my fork. I'm gonna score. I'm gonna get a coil. I'm gonna put that in there. And I gotta turn this so I can keep working on it. I'm going to spin it so you can hopefully see it on the camera. And I'm going to work that coil in there, in that joint, and strengthen that whole area where those two pieces are joined together. It's still a little bit fragile. have got to be careful here. It's wanting to fall over on me. But it's getting better. i got to work that in there. And I could add another piece of clay later. So you can kind of see the basic form starting here. I have some refining to do. I have some more work to do. Maybe I'm going to cut part of this out and pinch those two together so that they're closer together. But you can kind of see where we're headed here in the same direction. Again, this one is thinner because after all of the work, all of the basic uh, forming work was done and the clay firmed up a little bit, then I was able to come in there with some tools and refine those shapes. So that's the very beginning of a hippo. You can see here, very simply, the basic principles of working with slabs and coils. Slabs of clay to create big surfaces, coils to help join them together. One more time, again, it's best to have your clay too thick at the beginning. It may not look exactly the way you want it to when you're building it, but you can do the refining and adding and really shaping it after the clay has firmed up.